All right, back with you on the Bronx Buzz. I am really excited because we are bringing on, I don't want to say an old friend, but a longtime friend. And as I mentioned to Maureen Shea, who is uh, one of the great boxers of our time, a Bronx boxer, is that when you get to uh, get meet someone that you have a good relationship with, that you that is a Bronx person that understands the same realities of life that you do, you just, just move right along. So ladies and gentlemen, one of the great pioneers of women's boxing, from the BX, it is Maureen Shea. Uh, nice to have you with us. Mo, hi, those hi, of us Gary. who know yep, you call you yep. Mo. You know what's funny? You said about Bronx Boxer. Do you know that's on my license plate? Really? Bronx Boxer? My, my license plate has been BX Boxer in every state I've lived in. From New wow. York to New Jersey, from New Jersey to California, California now in Florida. BX Boxer is my license plate. So. There you go. Well, that, <laughs> you, you can't escape it. That's who you nope, are. I don't want so, to. Yep. So yep, let's so. see. Um, you the, the reason you're here is not because Gary wanted to meet an old friend, um, <laughs> which was always fine. But also, um, you are fighting uh, again in New York. Now, this is the first time in a long time, right? 12 years. 12 years wow. it's been. Yep. Yep. I've been all over Mexico, California. It's been quite a journey. Um, but yeah, I'm coming back home. And and um, what's exciting about this? Aside, uh, well, let's put it this way: you are really excited to be fighting in New York again. I am very, very much so. The energy in New York. I mean, I've been in so many different arenas, from the Forum in Los Angeles to you know, and to giant soccer stadiums in Mexico. You know, winning my my first world title out there. You know, but the New York crowd is just a different crowd. You know, the energy there. If you've never fought there, it's it's electrifying. So I'm I'm really excited to feel that again. So we're, we're going to build this as Mo comes home. Uh, <laughs> that's it. Um, but now this is going to be, let's, let's get it. It's going to be Saturday, um, May 7th um, yep. at St. John's University in Queens. Yes. Uh, and um, this um, marks kind of an important moment in your career for you. Why don't we mm -hmm. talk a little bit about, um, you said uh, we were talking about it earlier and it's pretty much mm -hmm. out there. You've mm -hmm. been disappointed that the WBA hasn't recognized all the great things you've done. And this is your way of getting back to it. So why don't you tell us a bit well, of yeah. that story? You know, a little bit about, um, well, I was set to fight. Um, you know, I, I moved to Florida in 2019. I fought three times and I fought my way back up the rankings and I was ranked number one by the WBA. And um, in May of 2020, I was set to fight for the WBA world title and um, COVID hit. So it was postponed and postponed and moved. And then I was told that they were that they chose two other women that weren't ranked to fight for the world title. Um, they then they promised me that I would fight the winner of that fight, which was rightfully mine to fight. I said okay, and then next thing I knew, I was out of the rankings. Now, do we know why? Is there is something out there that uh, you know? I, I I don't. Um, well, you know, is it political? Get, I mean, it could be a little political. Promoters getting involved, and and you know, um, you know, it's it's just it's just really unfortunate. But you know. You know me, you know, you put a door in front of me, I'm going to bash it down. So I'm like, okay, I took some time away and not so much that I wasn't training, but I was studying and I, you know, I'm not going to do this if my heart isn't hundred percent in it. And I was a little, I was bitter. And it's funny. I did an interview with Jerry Cooney and he asked me, you know, are you bitter? Are you bitter about this and that? I'm not bitter. Wow. You know, I was, I was bitter about the fact that that happened to me because I'm like, I, I'm 29 and two with 13 knockouts. I've been working my tail off for the last 16, 17 years in the professional rankings. And, you know, I've proven myself time and time again to do something like that to me and to have girls that have seven fights, six fights fighting for world titles. That's very unfair. And I think it's unfair to the public too, because they're not seeing what female boxing really is. And the women like myself can really do. And there was, there was a fight this past weekend, you know, with Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano. Phenomenal fight. You've got Katie Taylor, who's a decorated Olympian, but Amanda Serrano, who's, you know, she's been fighting for a very long time. And, you know, and, and you could see the skill levels in those two women and to show two top women fighting. I think that's really important. But you've got to choose the top women that earn those spots. Uh, you know, as we watch you tell that story uh, and Bronx people, of course, can relate to it. Mm -hmm. We could see that your energy was up. And, you know, you always want to be, mo I'm, I'm preaching the choir here. You always want to be motivated. You always want to have a little juice. I mean, because, <laughs> you know, otherwise you, you know, get beat up pretty good yeah. uh, and, and you want to defend yourself. But it sounds to me like you have a little more energy and this is like, I, I, you know, I'll go to the great boxers to Muhammad Ali, who felt he had something to prove yeah, more than just, of course, wanting to be the champion. hundred percent. hundred percent. It's definitely, it's definitely different for me now. And the time away, I mean, COVID hit, but then my father had fallen ill and my father passed mm. away last April and I chose to, 
thank you. I chose to step back and stay, be with my family. I've been away from my family for over 11 years because for tra traveling, for boxing and training. And it was time for me to give to my father. And I did, I, I was here, I moved to Florida. I've been here with my family and being here with my mother. And um, you know, that's been, that's been really, really important for me right now to just do that. Um, uh, there's a couple of angles of this that I want to ask. Number one, um, what is the path? In other words, you have a good fight now, um, let's say on Saturday, and then um, you hope it makes a bit of a statement. And then how f how long will it take for you to get to that point to um, get the next bite and um, uh, the next fight and 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 win? What, what do you think? Well, you know, I'm hoping that it makes a lot of noise, and I'm hoping that my skill is. I mean, people get to put. I put. I get to put my skill on display. And so that's the whole point to get back in the rankings to show. I mean, I was told people said that I was retired. I never retired. I even posted on Instagram that I'm not retired. I'm just not giving worth anything fi to fight for. You know, what, what is the purpose? You know, so this is this is a time for me to come back, show my 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 talent, my skill, my marketability. I mean, I've done it already time and time again. But I said, you know what? I'm going to give it one more run. I'm really going to go and um, give it 100 percent. But you know what? The climate is different for women's boxing right now, especially with this huge uh, historic event that we had last weekend with Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano main eventing in the garden. I mm -hmm. was, I've been fortunate enough to fight in the garden. I've co-featured on pay-per-view and the only other female to do that in over a decade was Layla Ali back then I co-featured to Shane Mosley. So I've made some, a lot of headway um, for myself and with women's boxing, but I feel like that yet last weekend's fight was huge in a historical event and a pinnacle now that women can sell. Women are exciting. People can't stop talking about that fight, but those women are given the opportunity. That's what we needed. We needed the opportunity to show, you know, that we can we can fight, we can sell, and that people want to watch. So, you know, it, it's evolution. Uh, Times have changed, and people uh, want to see it. Uh, you know, I'm glad you brought that up. I want to ask you about you as a fighter. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I didn't look it up. How old are you? 41. 41. So yeah. now we're talking to a 41 year old boxer. Mm -hmm. I think from mm -hmm. when, when, for people who don't know, they set up a ring on, in Castle Hill Avenue. Yes. And Maureen and I did the play by play of, of some yep. real fun. Fight. I was in my, I was in my 20s then. That, that's what I mean. How have you changed as a boxer? And uh, I, I mean, presumably you're not as young as you were, mm -hmm. but, but you have certain technical skill that maybe mm -hmm. you didn't have then. Absolutely. And I love that question because a lot of people say, well, you're 41. Why are you you're still fighting? Well, you know, women are different than men. Number one, we fight two minute rounds. So we don't have the wear and tear of the men. But the most important thing is that women, well, women, I started when I was 17 years old. I had 12 amateur bouts. I went professional in 2005, now having 33 professional fights. You know, I didn't have the wear and tear on me. And I honestly feel for myself personally, I feel like I feel and I feel women in general, they get better with age. And I'm not saying that to be like all cliche, but you know, it's very true. I'm more aware of my body. I, I I have more maturity. I have a ton of experience now, not just boxing experience, but life experience. And I know how to apply and that, all and that, that plays. I got to know that that plays. Absolutely. Wow. There's something that my manager, Luigi Elchese, had said to me when I was in college, because he trained me when I was in college. And he said, listen, when your school, your school life isn't going right, your boxing life is going to go all right. Your personal life's not going to go right. And you know what? It's so true. And balance has been such an important factor for me in my life that I, I really wanted to like get that balance. And I feel like now in my life, I'm the most balanced I've ever been mentally, wow. emotionally, and spiritually. I feel and like with and with motivation to get to 100%. somewhere. Um, yes. uh, one, one, I want to just pursue it one more technical <laughs> skill. Yes. Faster with the hands, more knowledgeable, better able to so, read an opponent. Where, where are yes. we at? Yes. So with that, you know, Back in the day, there weren't a lot of televised women's fights. My fight was one of the few that was televised, a lot of my fights, you know, especially in New York. I'm able to now sit back and see the tape on my opponents. I wasn't able to see that before because wow. women's boxing wasn't as big. Everybody was seeing tape on me, but I wasn't seeing tape on them. Wow. So now I'm in a position where I can sit back and everybody can try to study my fights, but I'm not the wow. same fighter that fought in 2015. You know, mm. I'm different now. I mean, that's the, the last fight that was televised. From then on, any fights that I've had after that, which I have had three or four fights after that, they're not televised. So that's that's huge. As far as when you go to the, the speed, I work with a phenomenal strength and conditioning coach named Phil Daru. Um, Phil Daru has worked with Dustin Poirier. He works with Amanda Nunes. He's worked uh, with Joanna Jacek. These are UFC champions, but he's worked with a lot of boxers. I actually am also his, his executive assistant now, but I met Phil in 2016. The, 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 the pairing of Derek Santos, my boxing trainer, with Phil DeRue's strength and conditioning for, for me personally has been 
life changing. Well, I feel faster. Yeah. I feel stronger. I feel everything is just so sports. And, and Saturday night at Queens College, what do we know? What time you're about? Uh, boy, she she got chills right there. Yet. I saw that. You were like, oh, <laughs> Saturday <laughs> night, I'm gonna be there. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. What what um, time you think your fight is going to be? Doors open at seven. I'm really not sure where they're going to put me on the card. I have a lot right. of people, a lot of love coming out from New York. I have people flying in from California and mm-hmm. Florida to see me fight. Um, so I I really don't know where I'm going to be on the card, but uh, you know it's going to be a great card. Joe DeGuardi always puts on really good shows, really action packed, competitive shows. So I think it'll be really great. Um, but um, one thing I also want to mention: you talked about the office that you're in and what and yes. what job you do. Yeah. Has um you know being part of a, a training facility um and and getting involved with other fighters and training and working with young people has yeah. that helped you as a boxer and and to grow and develop your own skill? Absolutely. A hundred percent. I watch these, I watch these fighters train. I watch them younger. Um, you know, the younger guys that are just coming up. Um, I see things that they do and I'm able to help them as well. And I'm able to have really important conversations. And, um, you know, they've asked me a lot of questions out of, as a veteran fighter and it's really opened my eyes. And, um, you know, I, I think, I, honestly, we're, we're almost out of time. So finish yeah. that sentence. And I want to mention one thing that you'll I work understand. with two young females. I work with a nine-year-old and a 10-year-old. And wow. I have to say, Ray Lynn, yes. And Cleopatra, they've been probably my biggest motivation. I, they're the only two girls I have time to work with, but I love working with them because it's what I would have needed as a kid. What, 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 what some people don't know, I teach a, 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 a class on TV performance. And what I find when I teach that class, it reminds me of all the techniques and things that I learned and tried to develop. The and then when I and then when I go back on the air, I say, "Oh, I better not do that. The students might yes. see it." And I'll, I'll... listen. One Keep more thing, it. of course, yep. you were you were the million million dollar baby. We know that that was. I'm wondering if that experience of being a stand in 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 that movie hel- also helped because man, you were there on in a movie screen and all that, and so. There's nothing that you're going to see that's going to get in your way, right? I mean, that- well, no, I think for me, I mean, just all the like, leading up to that, leading up to for Million Dollar Baby, just being the primary sparring partner and, you know, going through all the things that I went through while I was fighting. No, I, I have so much experience. I mean, like I said, so much life experience. I've done so much. And, and it um, all gets you. Listen, we, we got to go. Um, yeah. Maureen Shea, if you if Thank we were in together, I'd give you a big hug. Uh, I know. And, and I wish you virtually. good luck. Uh, Thank you. Saturday night, May 7th, doors yes. open at 7 o'clock, St. John's yes. University. I'm going to try to get out there. There's all things going on. We'll see if I can. But we're yeah, going to be that. rooting like hell for you. The entire 1.4 million people of the Bronx are rooting for Maureen's Day Saturday. I appreciate that. Uh, folks, we got to run. Um, uh, thank you uh, to David Brand from our first segment. And good luck to Maureen carrying the Bronx on her shoulders and in her hands when she gets out there Saturday night. And we'll see you next week for more Bronx Buzz. Good night.